On the back of these earnings, what does a share buyback tell us about your opportunities or at least your optimism as you look to the quarters ahead? Yes, hi, good morning, Tom, and thanks for, uh, for having me. Uh, we finished the year well with a net profit of 545 million, clearly supported by a fully recovered NRI and again a quarter of impairment releases. So if you look at the full year, our overall profit 2.7 billion is an increase of 45% compared to last year and the ROE of 12%. And I'm particularly pleased that all client units delivered better, uh, better results. If you look at the overall environment, specifically credit quality and also client lending, they're holding up despite a challenging economic mm -hmm. backdrop. And we also significantly de-risk the bank by selling our non-core operations that's near finalized. Then if you look at mm. uh, the reference you made to a capital return, we indeed announced today another 500 million share buyback. And that comes on top of a full year dividend of around 150. So the total capital yep. return is around 1.8 billion over the, over the last uh, over 2023. Funny, you touched on return on equity, ROE. The target, though, lower than many of your peers. Why do you think that is? Yeah, it's also, I think, uh, 2023 has been an exceptional year. As I said already, we saw overall impairment releases. We expect that uh, this year to gradually start normalizing, although up to a sort of normalized through the cycle cost of risk, which is lower than, uh, than previously. Secondly, we're also investing for the future. So the underlying cost run rate in Q4 is more an indication for next year. So that will be around 5.3 billion. So cost will go up. And those two elements with higher cost and also normalization of, uh, of our overall or gradual normalization of, of impairments will mean that ROE for this year will be lower. We're also ending uh, uh, our planning period, so we provide new targets where we emphasize that we continue on our strategic uh, pass as set out in 2020, and we provide with that an ROE outlook of 9 to 10 percent for 2026. Mm. OK, so you do see costs going up and, and clearly staffing and wages will be part of that. What, what are you putting in place to kind of keep a check on costs going forward then, Ferdinand? Yeah, that's a good question. We always focus on costs, so that remains, uh, remains a key sort of drive. Uh, we have an absolute cost target for uh, uh, this year of 5.3 billion. We also laid out there's still significant investments, specifically around data, data infrastructure related new regulation like uh, SFR, but also related to further investment in digitalization of our processes as we significantly move towards being a digital bank with only 25 uh, uh, branches. Going forward, we expect costs to remain roughly at the same level as existing cost savings programs are countering the effect of inflation towards uh, uh, 2026. We also provide mm. a cost income a target of around uh, 60 percent. So the roughly same cost level is included there. But we're clearly focusing on countering the effects of inflation with uh, additional cost saving programs. Uh, and you, you flagged earlier in your earlier answer, you don't see a major problem with, with credit quality in an environment, of course, where the ECB has interest rates at, at 4 percent, where, of course, energy costs r remain, remain a concern for, for many clients, presumably. Talk to us a little bit more detail in terms of that credit quality. How much confidence do you have that, that you won't start to see a breakdown uh, and that you won't have to start putting more loan provisions? Do you expect to have to put more provisions uh, in the books in the, in the months and quarters ahead? How, how much confidence do you have in loan quality going forward? Yeah, if you look over last year, that is quite exceptional, or basically the last two years. We overall had impairment releases, so a cost of risk of minus five basis points for uh, 2023. And as I said earlier, if you look at the economic grab backdrop, we look at a gradual normalization this year. 
But if you look at the overall uh, bank risk profile, we have significantly de-risk because our corporate bank is now fully restructured and the non-core operations uh, being the non-core bank that is near finalized. So our balance sheet is very strong and consists of 60% of residential mortgages, which have an inherent very low uh, uh, cost, of, uh, cost of risk. And on a continuous basis, we're looking at the asset quality indicators, but for now, they look solid. But we're clearly looking at all the several parts and the more sort of energy-related sectors with continued uh, deep dives. But uh, we expect mm. a gradual normalization. What's your exposure to, 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 to commercial real estate at this point? And how much work have you been doing on, on that part of the business to mitigate risks? Yeah, it's a good question because it's uh, top of the news. If you look at our overall commercial real estate, it's around 15 billion. So that's roughly 6% of our overall uh, uh, lending book. Um, it's very well diversified. More than 50% is residential related. We have no exposure to US uh, uh, commercial, uh, commercial real estate. And we do very regular internal deep dives and stress tests. But we're overall mm. comfortable if you look at the overall impaired ratio, which is still at low levels. We're hearing as well that the Dutch government, of course, a major stakeholder in the business, expecting to wind its stake down to what, about 40%? About and we still, of course, wait for the politics uh, to, fir to firm up in the Netherlands. None of that, that does seem to be the plan. Do you expect, are you kind of prepared for, for the government to unwind its stake completely this year? Well, that's not up to, up to us, Tom, but it's clearly their intention is to uh, fully privatize uh, the bank. Uh, uh, they are now in the face of their second dribble-up program, so they're gradually reducing this year from around 49% to, 49 to uh, around 40%. So it will be good that at the same time we will be in the market with our share buyback. They have also said that, again, they want to participate pro rata in our share buyback. So that's also so the indication that they stick to their agenda despite having a caretaker government in further reducing the mm. stake in ABN Amro. There has, of course, as well been a lot of focus on what's happening in terms of, in terms of private credit. The growth of that area has been, has been pretty extraordinary. Are you looking to partner at all in terms of private credit or give your clients more access to that asset class? How are you thinking about private credit and what you can do to leverage that? Yeah, it's a significant uh, growth, clearly there, partner there, on one hand, access for our private wealth uh, 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 client base. And secondly, also, as I said earlier, we fully restructured our corporate bank, but on a continuous basis, we're looking how do we allocate uh, capital and more active portfolio management. Uh, so towards, uh, towards uh, the near future, it's clearly something where we will also looking where can we offload some of our own for exposure and where can we partner more. So it's a clear trend in, uh, in the market uh, we are seeing at all.